So today I decided to acknowledge one of my comments that said, I should make a platformer series that don't deal with only coins and score. I actually make the players interact with the enemies in a fun way. So I decided to make this. In this series, we're going to make a game that the player has a gun, has, the enemies have guns, and they all interact with each other. And we have power ups, screen shakes, and so many more. So stay tuned if you want to see more of this tutorials. But please, I don't want any of you criticizing me because this is not my game idea. It's Sean Spalding's own from his game maker channel. I use his assets and use his game idea just so that I can express myself in this tutorial series. So please don't be that guy in the comments criticizing me for using his stuff. First off, let's um, start by arranging our rest folder here. So we want to have a couple of folders. First, assets. And we want to have our levels, our screens, our auto loads. I think this should be all we need. Maybe in future tutorials, we're going to add more to that. So first off, your level scene, we're going to make a 2D scene, okay? And just call this game. So this is going to be our level scene. We're going to save it in levels, game.tscn. And now we want to make our player. So our player is going to be this rounded square. As you can see, I'm just going to drag it into the asset so that it's going to be stored in that folder. So we're going to click this plus here to create a new scene and we'll go over here to other notes. So, okay, you can click here or this plus button over here. When you click it, we're going to search for kinematic body 2D. So this is the best thing you can use for your player when you're doing a platformer because it's, um, it's a physics object and it can react to other objects and collisions around it. So yeah, we're going to rename that. We're going to double click that and rename it player. Okay, or you can just click um, rename or just hit the F2 button. So yeah, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a collision shape. As you can see here, it's given us an error that it needs a collision shape. So we're going to add it by say, by clicking on the node here and hitting Control A, Control A, or you can just go over here and click this plus button and you just search its collision shape. So I'm going to rename this as shape. Um, there's no need to rename it, it's just for preference sake. And we're going to name, give it a rectangle shape 2D. So what a rectangle shape is going to do is, this is actually the shape that is going to collide with other objects. As I said, a kinematic body is a physics body. So it has to collide with something, you know. So um, next thing we're going to do is drag in our square, which is going to be a sprite. So what we're going to do is click on the player again, Control A. And we're just going to search for sprite. So in, in later tutorials, we're going to make player be a, a real human being and be running up and down and stuff, just like shown in the preview. So we're going to drag on this rounded square over here to texture. That's when you click the sprite. Drag it over to texture and we have our texture. That's all. Next thing, increase this collision shape by using these three nodes here. Um, just increase it to the size of a square and that should be it. Hit Ctrl S to save it, and we're not going to save it in the levels. We're going to create a new folder and call this objects. Okay, objects. Okay, save it here, and we should be good. The next thing we want to do now is go to your game scene and we want to get a tile map. Okay, I'm just going to go off video now and get my tile map so that my tile asset so that you can see. So I'm back, I've imported the world.png. All you need to do if you want to import files is just click on your um, file browser here or just drag it in and that should be all. That's all you need to do. So um, in our game scene, we want to add a tile map. Okay, when we add a tile map, this is actually going to allow us to play, be able to place tiles, okay? This is actually a very simple way other than using normal objects because we can use static bodies, but that, would be no, that won't be so convenient for us. So we go over here, click the tile map, go over here to tile set, new tile set, click it, and you should have a window pop up like this. So if you don't have a window pop up, just go down here, you're gonna see tile set, click it, and it should show like this. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna click this plus button over here, go to assets and world or PNG, whatever you want to use. Just know that all these assets are gonna be on um, Discord or on each dio i don't know i'm just going to leave the link somewhere for each video so we have this 
our tile here added up and we want to make it a single tile so in future videos um when we actually go far in the game you're going to see that the other tiles are looking like grass and stuff we're going to use auto tiles for that but for now we're going to use single tile so when you click single tile you click this snap button here that will just give you this sort of grid and you click on this square so that's the one we need and that's the region we are selecting so we go to collision we click this here and just give it a square shape so that the player now will be able to interact with this square shape um occlusion we're not going to deal with that now navigation we're good so we can click the tile set to close that window there and if we click the tile map again you're going to see something that looks like this that is the wall of png so if you zoom in if i zoom in you should probably see that if i start placing tiles it's not placing it evenly and that's because the resolution of my sprites is not the same with that of the tiles tile map okay so we'll go back to cell 32 32 so all this all this depends on the size of your um wall that you're using mine is 32 by 32 so i literally just made this in paint and <laughs> um, it's very easy to make okay so um now we can just go over and drag so what you can do is hold shift and control on your keyboard then you can create a big block like this and if you hit that again use your right click and drag you can delete all of that so if you use shift and down or shift and any key like shift and click you can create a straight line you can create a bent line and stuff like that so i'm just going to go ahead and fix in some tiles here really fast time lapse time so yeah i'm done with my um tile set i don't know this should be a very ugly tile set <laughs> i'm so sorry um but yeah we can use this if we run the game now you're gonna see that it's not gonna do anything it's just gonna see as this shows this empty window which is not actually nice so what we need to do is drag in the player we can do that by just clicking this button here to instance the player you can see it here o player object slash player dot tsn or we can go over to our res registry here and just be like object c player dot tsn and we're gonna drag it in so if we drag it in you're gonna see it's going to bring it as a node so yeah that should be cool um if i drop it here and i say, I say it if i run it nothing is actually going to happen the square is just going to stay there and look at us <laughs> and the reason for that and the reason for that is because we have not given it any code so when we go back to the player we're going to click on the, we're going to click on the player node we're going to click on this script icon here and we're going to save this in this path so we're going to save it in the object path and it's going to be player.gd so i think that should be good we're going to create so now it's time for the code what we need to do is we're going to set some variables and if you don't know what variables are variables are basically containers that are used to store code so what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable the way to declare variables in godot is to type in the var keyword first and the name of the variable after it so we can say var move and it will be equal to a vector 2 so what is a vector 2 a vector 2 is just as you can see here they already given us an info it's a variable type that takes in two inputs which is the x and y coordinates um if you're not new to game dev you'll know that a player actually has or everything here has y and x coordinates so that we can move and interact with each other and stuff like that so we we'll go back here and we've declared our first variable other variables like speed um we can save our speed i'm going to give this like a 200 okay that's going to be the speed of the player and we're going to save our jump speed i'm going to give this like a minus 400 okay so if you're not new to game dev as i said before anyways for the godot engine the upper coordinate is minus okay the um upper y coordinate is minus and the lower y coordinate is plus if you're familiar with graph and stuff you will know that that's actually wrong it's meant to be inverted but in game dev or should i say in godot it's like that so the x coordinates um the left x is the same it's going to be minus and right x is going to be plus so um for us to actually move up we need to move in the y minus y direction as you can see here this is zero and this is minus 50 and it just goes up like that 
So that's why our jump speed is a minus sign. So next thing we want to do is we set our gravity to be equal to 10 and physics process function is a function that runs itself 60 frames every second. Okay, so whatever is written in this code is going to be happening 60 times in one second. So actually what a function is, if you're not new to programming, <laughs> a function is just a container that holds code. It's just like a variable, but for a large chunk of code and stuff like that. You can actually recall this um, and reuse it just the way you use normal variable. We want our y coordinate to be plus, to be added to this gravity, okay? So if we are up and we start adding a 10, it's going to come down till it reaches zero and until we reach the ground and stuff like that. Next up, move the x equals to input the get action strength. Um, UI on the right minus input the get action strength. UI on the left. And that should be it. So what this essentially is doing is, it's going to get the right value. So if we are pressing the right key, this um, will return a one and if we are pressing the right key and we're not pressing the left key, the left key will return a zero and the right key will return a one. So that will be one minus zero, which will take us in the right direction. Okay, so one, um, since the right direction of the X is one, two, three, four, not in the minus. So it's going to give us a forward direction. That's right. So um, if, the, if this gives us a zero and the left gives us a one, then we want to move in the left direction that's left of the player so yeah that should be it and i'm just going to um, enclose all this in a bracket and sorry and i'm going to multiply it by our speed sorry yeah so what this is doing is going to take down minus one or one and just put it and multiply it by the speed. So one times the speed, which is 200, will give us 200. Minus one times the speed, which is 200, will give us minus 200, if you understand what I mean. So um, that should calculate the x coordinates properly. Next thing. So yeah, this is where we come um, to use the jump speed. So if we are pressing the up key, we want to jump. And that should do it. Next thing. We want to use move and slide so this is going to actually this one is going to move our player without this function note without this function you won't move your player except you um are experienced you could do and can do other things <laughs> okay so i think this should be all we need i'm gonna hit game and we're gonna run it and see we're gonna hit f6 or we're gonna play press this button and as you can see, we can move left, we can move right, and we're just moving around. If we press the two keys at the same time, it's going to give us a 1 at the right and 1 at the left, which is equal to 0, and 0 times 200 also is 0. So we're not going to move. So I think that should be it. Um, as you can see, as we're on the air, we can jump, which is not possible, actually, according to normal world. So we're going to have to fix that. What we're going to do is we're going to make a variable called can jump. So we can say var can jump and it's going to be equal to a false at the beginning so next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach another node to this player node so we're going to hit ctrl a and we're going to go to area 2 d we're just going to type in area 2 d and we're going to just call this so we're going to add another node collision shape in order to get the, get rid of that error and for the collision shape we're going to use a another box rectangle and that's just so that we can keep track of whether we're on the ground or not. So for the collision shape, we're going to drag it down a bit to here. We're going to increase the length, okay, and reduce the width. So we just want to make sure that it's taking out um, at the bottom here just a bit. So this is what is going to be colliding with the ground, and we're going to know if we should jump or not. So go to node, um, we click on the area, go to node, you can see all these signals here. And what signals are going to do is, especially for this area, what signals are going to do is, it's going to show us, it's going to tell us if we are touching something or not. So if we're touching a body, um, we're going to collect that signal. So if we're touching a body now, this function is going to be called, this body detector function here is going to be called. That's all you need to know. Right now, when we are touching a body that's either the ground or some other body, then what we need to do is we're going to say can jump or can jump is equal to true. 
So it's only when we're on the we're touching something that we can jump. Like only when the base of our character is touching something, that's when we can jump. And we're gonna connect another signal body exited. So if we exit from that body, we say can jump is equal to false. Sorry for my spelling there, false. So yeah, I think we should be done. Press go to game F6. And now gravity brought it down. And as you can see, we can still jump on the air. And for some reason that is. The reason for that is here, over here where we are jumping, I didn't set the, the condition. So when we are jumping, we have to check if we are pressing the up key and we can jump okay and can jump so if we cannot jump we are not going to jump but if we can jump and we press the up key we're going to jump try it again so we're here we can move we can jump and we cannot jump on the air anymore so this is really cool as you can see if we're on the wall we can slide on the wall which is not cool and the way to change that is just to um we're going to reduce the size of our collision shape here. We're going to reduce it so that it's not going to be allowed to touch. If it wants to touch, this guy is going to um, somehow bulge it and it won't be able to touch. So we're just going to try it again. And we go to the wall. We can't, we can't slide against the wall anymore, as you can see. Um, we can't slide against the wall anymore. So yeah, that's the way to make your simple platformer. Um, in part two, we're going to be talking about how to add some running animations to the character and some other things like that and yeah thanks for watching see you guys next time smash subscribe so that you won't miss part two and goodbye